Damascus is denying media claims about an unprecedented chemical weapons attack and massacre just outside Damascus. The Saudi-owned media network Al Arabiya citing a Syrian rebel group now claiming uh, that hundreds of people have been killed in an unconfirmed attack. All this uh, just days after UN inspectors arrived in Syria to probe earlier reports of chemical killings. Our correspondent in the region, Paula Slea, has details. It is unconfirmed, but the initial report suggests that the attack was on rebel-held areas of eastern Damascus. According to Al Arabiya, which is a Saudi Arabian network, activists at the Syrian Revolutionary Command Council say that regime fighter jets, so these are forces loyal to the Syrian President Bashar Assad, were flying over the area after a bombardment using chemical agents. The numbers are not clear. Al Arabiya is reporting that more than 600 people have been killed, but other mainstream networks say dozens have died. Now, we have spoken to the information minister. We've also spoken with people living not far from this area, and none of them have confirmed the attack. But as you can well imagine, the reports are creating a massive storm on social media, and everyone is discussing this. Al Arabiya, as I mentioned, is Saudi Arabia's network, and Saudi Arabia has its own agenda inside Syria. It is anti the President Bashar Assad. And, and so it is possible that these reports are a way of pushing Saudi Arabia's agenda against Assad. The timing certainly is significant. It comes at a time when United Nations inspectors have come to Syria to conduct a probe into the use of chemical weapons. The situation regarding chemical weapons is very unclear. The United Nations says that it has received up to 13 reports of usage of chemical weapons inside Syria, one of those reports coming from the Damascus regime, and the rest coming mainly from the United, United Kingdom, France, and the United States. Both sides of the conflict, both the rebel and the government have denied using any kind of chemical weaponry. But back in May, the United Nations independent investigator Carla de Ponta said that there was strong suspicions that the rebels have been using the illegal sarin gas. For months, unverified video clips showing purported victims of chemical weapon, these, these victims choking, foaming at the mouth and displaying other possible symptoms of chemical usage in Syria have been making their way onto YouTube. Some journalists have also allegedly interviewed victims of chemical attacks inside Syria. Of course, each side in the conflict has accused the other of using chemical weapons, each side having its own agenda. And outside na nations backing the government or the rebels have also gotten involved, generally backing their allies' version of events. So all of this really has become part of political manipulation. President Obama has declared that if there is any proof that chemical weapons have been used, this would be a red line that would trigger American involvement inside Syria. And just a very short while ago, I spoke to William Engdahl, a geopolitical analyst and author of Myths, Lies and Oil Wars. He believes the report is nothing short of an anti-Assad media campaign. The Syrian government, the Assad government, has absolutely nothing to gain by using chemical weapons, and they know that. Uh, I think the key point here is, is the point that uh, Obama made this very unfortunate statement, pinning himself in, that if proof of chemical weapon use by, by the government uh, is demonstrated, that's the red line for U.S. military involvement, no-fly zone, the whole thing. And. Uh, this has become now the, the line in the sand issue between war and not war on the side of the U.S. and, and NATO in Syria. So uh, it's no surprise that the Saudis, who are uh, quite avid backers of, of, of a regime change, are, uh, are uh, floating this in their, in their news media to try to create the impression, I think, of, of uh, a gas attack by the Assad government.